Thanks for tuning in to TheLoneWolf.com. My name is Drew, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the 2020 Norco site and learning a little bit more about the ride-aligned design system and the science of send. Come along for a ride. We're gonna hit the trails a little bit and tell you what some of the engineers had to say about this new bike and what makes it so different. Norco will be offering this all mountain bike in either 29 inch or 27 and a half inch wheeled options. There will be a number of carbon, aluminum, and frame only options. They will also offer a 27.5 inch wheeled kid specific build. And if you want to customize your bike like us, you've got the opportunity to take advantage of their Build Your Ride, Ride Your Build custom program. In that program, you'll be able to customize suspension spec drivetrain and any number of features you want to get the bike you want out on the trail. Now, the Ride Align design system um, has a few elements working for it, but we really wanted to learn what exactly that meant and what the theory was behind it. So, Norco said that they'd taken a lot of anthropometric data, looked at a lot of numbers based on riders' morphology, their body shapes, sizes. They've taken a long look at suspension kinematics and really wanted to take a step back and design a frame that was optimized for each rider regardless of their size. The main key purpose of it is to get the rider's center of gravity over the bike to optimize the ride, the traction, and your experience on the trail. Every size frame is gonna have a, a, not only a different reach, but it's gonna have different seat tube angles, it's gonna have a different rear center. There's a number of dimensions that change to optimize your weight distribution and body position on the bike. Give you more traction, it's gonna give you more confidence, it's ultimately gonna keep you safer on the bike as well. Along with evaluating all the kinematics and size specific frame uh, details, Norco has developed a really cool ride aligned bike setup guide. Now what that does is not only gives you a good starting point for your suspension air pressures and tuning, but even addresses things like tire pressure, handlebar width, and stem lengths. So you can actually go into the website, uh, input your rider skill level, your height, your weight, and from that you'll be able to extrapolate air pressures, rebound, compression, even down to tire pressure and bar width. Now again, this isn't going to necessarily be your absolute end-all be-all tune but it's going to be the best bet to get you at least in the ballpark and out on the trail experiencing what this bike can do for you. So after those few initial rides where we experimented with the Norco's recommended settings from their bike setup guide, um, you know, we since made a couple of tunes, added some more volume reducers to the rear shock and have played around a little bit. We asked Norco if they worked with riders outside of British Columbia and uh, it found out in fact that they had riders in the Phoenix area, Southern California and beyond helping create a database of well-rounded information to give riders the best bet. And uh, we hear that they might even be making some more adjustments to help riders better set their bikes up for regions specific to them. And if you want to know more about the Ride Aligned concept, make sure you visit thelonewolf.com where we have our full interview with the design engineer and engineering manager from Norco as they answered a lot of our questions about what went into making this frame and the suspension tunes work. As you can see, there's definitely been some changes to the geometry on the new site. Slacker, longer, much steeper seat tube angle, uh, a much more aggressive or radical approach to their ride aligned and gravity tuned concepts. Uh, it is 160 mil front end with a 150 rear. The reach on our size large frame is 485 millimeters and it's got a rear center of 440 millimeters. Now the bike has a 64 degree head angle and a 77 degree seat tube angle, which is rather steep. Also the seat tube angle, as I mentioned before, changes on uh, each size. So it kind of gets you in that optimum climbing zone. Now the seat tube is also oversized on this bike. So it really helps stiffen up the, the backbone and the center of this bike on the trail we definitely noticed that stiffness increase as well. The goal with the Norco site was to create an all-mountain, pedal-friendly, downhill-friendly trail bike. 
Some might say, well, with 160 front and 150 mil of rear travel, this is an enduro bike. Norco kind of winked at us and said, if we think this is going to be the enduro replacement, just wait. Um, we won't go into too much detail, but you can speculate there. The thing is, is with the geometry changes and the suspension tune changes, the travel denotes less of what this bike's intended purpose is than the on-trail performance. It's got a high initial leverage rate with kind of a medium progressive tune, which makes it, you know, pretty pedal friendly. I definitely found myself using the uh, lockout on the shock, or I should say the, the pedal platform on the shock on longer road climbs. It is still pretty smooth and supple. I was able to get a lot of good traction out of that rear shock when I left it open. Um, so that was definitely nice. The steep seat tube angle, long reach put me in a really nice climbing position. It was actually, a, took a minute to get used to feeling like I was so far up over the front, but I very quickly learned to appreciate it, especially on some of the steeper climbs. So on the descending, there was a, a little bit more of a learning curve when it came to the bike. Right away, I felt super comfortable with the geometry. Um, again, it was just a very confident, natural feeling on the bike. On some of the lower grade trails, it, it felt a little bit harsh and chattery, especially up front to my hands. So we kind of reevaluated the shock uh, and the fork setup. You know, I wasn't sure if this 35 mil deity bar might have been a cause for a lot of that hand fatigue. But we did make some changes. Haven't got a ton of time on it yet. We're still working on a, a long term review of this bike. This was kind of more just to get it out in front of you answer some of the questions you might have about the geometry changes and ride align concepts. But after putting some more volume reducers in that shock, I did notice a big improvement. Also on steeper terrain, the bike rides a lot better. It really comes alive. It helps shift the body weight up front, uh, put a little more mass onto the fork and really lets that rear shock work well. Thanks for tuning in to our video, guys. Stay tuned for a long-term review. We're gonna be spending a lot more time on this bike, really getting to know it before we report back on our findings, pass it around to a few more of our guys. So um, hope you enjoyed this deeper look into the science of Sen and Norco's Ride Align design system. So stay tuned, be sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you out on the trails. Thanks.